Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to discuss the differences between my two concert guitars that I'm playing nowadays. I've received many questions about them. Uh, what are they made of? What strings do I use on each? What instrument do you use to play different repertoire? Why do I like one over the other for a certain repertoire? Do I actually prefer one over the other? All this and more coming up. Let's get started. Okay, so first, with this beautiful spruce top instrument, this is a guitar made by Douglas Scott. Douglas is based in British Columbia, Canada. And I found this instrument uh, via the Grand Guitar Salon in Montreal owned by Paul Jabrayan, great guy. He always helped me find my concert guitars. Since the day I started looking for a concert guitar, which was back in 2009, 2008, 2009, that was the first guitar that I actually got from Paul. And ever since he's been helping me find great guitars. And this is one of them, one of the best ones that I've ever played, in fact. This is the guitar that you uh, hear um, beautifully recorded by Drew Henderson on my video Toccata and Fugue by uh, J.S. Bach, BWV565. It's a fantastic instrument, great response, quick response, made of European spruce, and it's a traditional built inside. So everybody thinks it's a Australian built like a lattice brace or maybe a double top. It's not. It's actually a traditional guitar. The untraditional things about it are the elevated fingerboard and the sound port and probably the armrest. Some people say armrest. This one, I actually got the guitar without it and then I added it. This armrest is made of ebony. The, the fingerboard is made of ebony as well. The back and sides are made of Indian rosewood. The neck, I believe, is a Spanish cedar neck. And similarly, the, uh, the bridge is Indian rosewood as well. This instrument has great uh, resonance, has a fantastic tonal palette, something that I love so much. That's the thing that I love about Spruce. And it has everything. And this side port here, if you can see, bring it back closer for the, the focus. Here you can see, it can, I can open it halfway, I can completely remove this, and I can close it for a more traditional sound. So this is a great advantage that this instrument has over others that have sound ports without this portal thing. The strings that I use on this one, I always use Savarez strings, except for this guitar, I found that the strings that came with it, especially the trebles, are Augustine, the, uh, the Regals. And so I decided to stay with the trebles here, with the, with the Augustine trebles. And I use basses, the CR540s uh, for the from Savarez. So uh, this is the spruce guitar. On to the cedar. This is my uh, cedar concert guitar and this is made by Martin Blackwell who is actually also based in British Columbia, Canada. And his guitars are phenomenal. You know the first guitar that I got from Paul from the Grand Guitar uh, um, Salon in Montreal was actually a Martin Blackwell guitar. Martin was starting to do double tops back then. And I tried it, I was completely enamored by the power and the sound. Now he has just improved on his design so much to the point that I think it's probably the best Cedar guitar that I ever owned, that's for sure. Probably ever played too. I haven't played something like this that is so complete in a way. This guitar has a powerful sound, has great sustain, fantastic playability, beautiful neck. Everything is so smooth about this instrument that sometimes you feel it's a bit too good to be true, you know. The nice thing about this and the thing, because this one is Martin built from me, so this I got straight from Martin. And uh, he asked me, Woods, what, you like cedar? Cedar, it's a double top, so it's a double cedar. Cedar from the inside and cedar from the outside. If, for those of you who don't know, it's, it has um, a balsa core, not a nomex core. So usually double tops have a nomex kind of honeycomb uh, structure. 
inside that's kind of aerospace material. But this one has balsa wood core. I'm not sure what the structure is in, inside exactly, whether it's straight or, or honeycomb as well or circles. I'm not sure, but it, it has this woody sound to it and it is already opening up more like a traditional instrument because it's made all of wood. So um, it has already improved since I've, got, I've gotten it basically, I received it last, last February, end of January. So it's been a, one year with me now already. The cedar, you know, usually the cedar guitars do not open so much after you buy them. They do, but not as much as a spruce. But this one has surprised me so far. It's been opening up since I bought it. It's incredible. And it responds like a traditional guitar too. So for example, if I don't, I know this from my experience, if I don't play a traditional guitar for a while, I have it in a case, I take it out, it's not so vibrant as I last left it, you know, but I play it for probably half an hour or 15 minutes, and then it starts again opening up and responding the way I left it. And even better, now with a few days, it gets even better. So this guitar has those qualities, that's why I love it so much. And Martin asked me what kind of woods you'd like for the back and sides, and for me, to be honest, Probably one of the best co wood combinations uh, I've tried was the uh, spruce, European spruce or German spruce, Italian spruce with Brazilian rosewood back and sides. I could not find a more beautiful sound and probably something that equal it until I met this guitar because this is, I've never tried a cedar with a Brazilian rosewood back and sides and this has proved so worth it to have the, the Brazilian, you can see gorgeous Brazilian, very dark but beautiful. Brazilian, well, I'm not sure if you can see the, here I get the reflection for you a little bit on it, look, it's beautiful. And uh, the, the sides also, and the, the neck is also a Spanish cedar neck, I believe. And this is, has a fan strut, so it's not lattice brace or anything like that, but it's a double top. So the combination of cedar double top, the top that Martin does with the Brazilian, is just absolutely out of this world. You probably heard it already on some of my videos. and. And some of you have commented that they really enjoyed the sound of this guitar. And I can't agree more. I mean, it's fantastic. So these two guitars, it's, whenever I try to get a guitar, I want, whenever I play it, to feel that it's the best guitar that I've played. And I can't, honestly, I cannot make up my mind between those two guitars. I love them both. And whenever I hold one or the other, they just win my heart immediately. So I use Savarus strings on this guitar, the, the, the pack that I usually use, the CR540s, normal tension. And um, take the opportunity to thank Savarus for sponsoring me and for providing, providing me with, with strings and, and uh, gadgets from Savarus. It's extremely helpful for us. Um, not just nowadays, all the time. I'm, 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 I'm so happy I can change strings. Anytime I want, and I'm really grateful. So thank you very much to the Savarus family. So now, perhaps it's time to play a little bit um, of uh, music on each guitar. So I'll play uh, some music to test the registers and uh, have a few uh, final words in the end. So let's start the playing. I will first uh, showcase the Douglas Scott guitar, Spruce Top Indian Rosewood traditional built with the sound port open at this point and I'll play uh, let's test the bass register <laughs> register on the Martin Black.
Now let's test the um, melodic capacity and capability of the instrument. So I'll play uh, a little Paganini for you. More on the treble strings. <laughs> Now let's test the trebles on the black one. Now let's test some Spanish music. Now let's try some Spanish music on the Blackwell. Now let's start, try some chords on each. Some chords now on the cedar guitar.
So let's do some improv on each instrument, just exploring the sounds, and I'll uh, talk about what I like in uh, to when I look for a guitar, what I what I like to 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 hear from a guitar. So the first thing is the is the first string to sing. You know, it's very important, especially in in this part. Sometimes you hear some guitars, especially on the E string here or even here. You know, the, you hear the instrument kind of dissipate, the sound kind of just goes out to nothing. Uh, it does not continue with the body that it started with. See, this one has... Beautiful. Some notes better than others, but still there's a lot of body. similarity of each string so I don't want one string to be more overpowering you know so beautiful singing gorgeous sound from Douglas. I have no idea how they do that. The luthier, like the guitar is really fantastic. Let's do a bit of the same on the cedar guitar. Let's test the different registers and different notes. We'll start with the top register. I mean, that G-sharp, it's impossible to find guitars like this sometimes, you know. You're very lucky if you find the guitar, the cedar, that sings on the E string. And look, each string does not overbear the other. Not one is more than the other. You know this? At least from where I am standing. Everything is heard beautifully. And they all continue, you notice. That's what I look for guitar. The balance is absolutely important because if you have no balance between the strings, then it's going to start dictating your interpretation. It's going to start telling you what it likes to do. And that is going to change where you're going to put your fingerings, which, where you're going to do a vibrato, where you're going to you know, enjoy the instrument more. So. Unconsciously, you start gravitating towards the instrument where it works best, but when the instrument is fully balanced... Not a single string... Some routiers, they, they do this very well. Martin and Douglas, they're excellent with this, especially the balance of the instrument and the power in each register. It's all there for you to enjoy and to explore and to really, and that you never know. I mean, these are still brand new instruments. I mean, this is end of 2019, so we'll say one year. This one, end of 2018, so two years. I mean, barely. Wait for these another five years, five, six years, you'll, they'll open up much more. So, as you can tell from the sound, I cannot have one that I favor over the other. So there you have it. Two fantastic concert guitars. Douglas Scott from BC, Canada. Martin Blackwell from BC, Canada. I just can't make up my mind. Two gorgeous guitars. Fantastic playability, great balance throughout. I'm really lucky to have them. And I cherish them every day. I'm very grateful. 
And I'm also very grateful for Paul, who introduced me to these makers back um, in 2008, 2009. And I am so grateful that these makers keep getting better and better because, I mean, they keep searching just like me. I keep searching, I keep trying to get better at the music that I make. Same thing, the luthiers, they get better at the guitars that they build. I mean, it's a fantastic thing. So there you have it. Let me know which one you liked better, which sound you preferred. What do you look for in a guitar? Is it similar to what I look for? Do you prefer to play cedar or spruce? Do you gravitate towards one kind of regardless? Let me know in the comments. Let me know how you enjoyed the sound of each. Did you hear any differences, any similarities? I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.